Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurin Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Towards the end of Bhagavatam in the twelfth canto, Shukadev Goswami describes that he has given two kinds of stories in the Bhagavatam. The principal subject of the Bhagavatam is the pastimes of Krishna. But there are also stories of the dynasties of kings, like this one. And Shukadev explains that he's explained some of the stories of the kings just to awaken our sense of renunciation from this world. If we hear how different persons, great kings, how they, some of them were entangled in material life, others became great devotees of Krishna. By hearing this, that also gives inspiration to us. One kind of inspiration is negative and another kind is positive. Just this story, just this briefly narrated here, how the three sons of the fire god, they fell down to this material, to this earthly planet. Again they went up again. This is a kind of negative inspiration. Some people may think this is very nice. To be a fire god, and then again, even if you come to this earthly planet to be the son of a king, and then to go back to be a fire god, is certainly an elevated position within this universe. It's certainly better than taking birth as a dog or a hog. But one who is intelligent considers, what is the use even of being in the heavenly planets? Prabodhananda Saraswati, a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya, says, Tridashapur uh, Akasha Pushpayati that going to the heavenly planets is as realistic as growing flowers in the sky. It has no meaning. It's phantasmagoria. No. Just some imagine some imagination of happiness. It has no reality. The idea of being happy in this material world is just an imagination. In the Srimad Bhagavatam and in other scriptures like Mahabharat, there are Descriptions of the heavenly planets in where you can live very happily, so called happily. Everyone there, their body is very strong and beautiful. You don't, everyone is youthful and healthy. Everyone is cultured and well behaved. They live in beautiful cities with buildings made of corals, pearl, marble, with all beautiful furniture covered with silk, everything first class, jewels, everything. And there are apsaras, who are the prostitutes of the heavenly planets, who are very beautiful, much more beautiful than any beautiful woman of this planet. And there are many of them, and they are quite willing to associate with the demigods. Mm, yeah. Always there are beautiful birds, and singing very nicely, gardens, parks, lakes, rivers. There are rivers of nectar, Rivers of mango juice. So who wants to go there? Anyone want to go? If you want, you can go. By chanting Hare Krishna, you can also go to the heavenly planets. But, there is a but. There's no happiness there. Because there's no developed sense of Krishna consciousness. Without Krishna consciousness, even with all varieties of sense gratification, even if we're in the mode of goodness, there's no happiness. Despite so much facilities for sense enjoyment, the demigods are always full of anxiety. Because that is the nature of material life. The same kind of anxiety that is generated here is generated there. Anxiety is generated by rivalry, envy. Just like two demigods might be after one demigod woman. So that produces so much mental disturbance. Another anxiety is from the demons. They're always afraid that the demons are going to attack them. The, the heavenly planets are above this earth planet. And below this planet are the planet of the demons. The demons are also very powerful living beings. And from time to time they attack the demigods to try to take over their position. So the, the demigods, they're also anxiety because the same anxiety that everyone has, fear of death, no one, no one is thinking consciously about death. But in everyone's subconsciousness, that fear is there. Therefore, Krishna says in Gita, Abrahma Bhuvanaloka Puna Arvijanojana. 
that every planet in this universe, even up to the Brahma Loka, the topmost planet, is uh, simply a place of misery. Because always there is death, rebirth, death, rebirth, all this is going on. Anitya masukam lokam, that is description, Krishna gives. Dukhalaya mashashvitam, there's the two lakshan, what's the characteristic of this material world? One is that it is full of misery, another temporary, simply full of misery. And even if you think, I am very happy in my situation, and that situation is temporary, you can't stay in that situation. We may think, I am very happy with my wife, my house, my car, and all these things. But you will be kicked out from that situation. And then you have to go somewhere, not under your choice. Maybe to become a cat or a dog. Most likely to become a cat or a dog. In the modern age, people, they're simply living like cats and dogs. So in their next life, if they become a cat or a dog, it's not at all surprising. So anyway, cat, dog, human being, whatever kind of body we get, it is simply miserable. This uh, Jagadananda, Jagadananda Pandit, in his Prem Bibarta, he describes what is the situation in the material world. He says, Kabu Raja, Kabu Praja. Sometimes you get the body of a king, sometimes the body of an ordinary person. Kabu Biprashudra. Sometimes you get born in the body of a Brahmana, Brahmin family, sometimes Shudra family. Mm. Kabu Dev, mm. Kabu Dev, Kabu Daita, Kabu Kita Kudra. Sometimes you get born as a demigod, sometimes as a demon, and sometimes as an insignificant worm in stool. Kabu Sharge, Kabu Mate, Narake Ba Kabu. Sometimes you get born in heaven, sometimes on earth, and sometimes in hell. Kabud, Kabu Suki, Kabu Duki, Kabu Dasa Prabhu. Sometimes you get some relatively good situation, sometimes miserable situation, uh, sometimes you're a servant, sometimes you're a master. I mean it to Krishna Das, e Kata Bhule, Maya Nafar Hoya, Chiradin Bhule. says that because we have forgotten that we are the eternal servant of Krishna, we therefore have to rotate within this material world in different species of life. So this kind of story in Bhagavatam, it doesn't directly give us transcendental knowledge. If we hear someone is born in, as a fire god and then again he comes down to the earth planet being cursed and again he goes up again, that's not directly transcendental knowledge. But as it's within the context of Bhagavatam, which is full of transcendental instructions, we should be intelligent enough to take the lesson out of it. That's why we have the purport here. The Prophet has given the purport to explain what is the significance of this. And that's why when one reads Bhagavatam, one is supposed to be vicharana paro. Vichar means to consider or to judge. So one should read with his intelligence awake to try to understand this matter very nicely. Vichar means to consideration. One should consider the subject matter with his intelligence alive, understand the matter very deeply. Simply to read in a mechanical way will not help us. Just like you see some people in India, they recite every day one chapter or maybe all the chapters of Bhagavad Gita, the Sanskrit, but in a mechanical way. Because in Shastra it is said that if you read this chapter of Bhagavad Gita, you get such and such a benefit. If you read another chapter, you get another kind of benefit. This is called Falla Shruti. Falla Shruti means at the end of any chapter or any story in the Shastra, it says, if you read this, you will get such and such a benefit. And for important books like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, there are separate books or whole chapters of bigger books which explain the glories of that book. That is called Mahatmya. We have Bhagavad Gita Mahatmya, Srimad Bhagavatam Mahatmya. Mahatmya means that which explains the glories. Mahima means glory. So some people, they, they think, oh good, so let me read every day one chapter of Bhagavad Gita, and I'll get so much benefit. So they read it, just they read the shlokas. Dhamakshetri, Kurukshetri, Samaveda, Yayatava, Mahamagam, like this they read. But it is, this is not the way to actually understand the subject matter. This 
Bhagavatam recommends we be vicharana paro, we should be thoughtful to understand what is the subject matter. And not only thoughtful, but we should read with devotion, bhaktya. That shloka says, tat srinvan supatan vicharana paro bhaktya vimuchandaraha. Says that if one reads, one should hear the Bhagavatam, first thing, hear the Bhagavatam, and study very carefully, considering the subject matter with one's intelligence. And if one does this with devotion, then he will be liberated and go back home back to Godhead. That uh, in Chaitanya Charitamrita also we see directions for reading Srimad Bhagavatam. One poet from Bengal, he had made some, he had composed some poem about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But he had some misconceptions. He didn't understand philosophy properly. So Surup Damada Goswami gave him some instructions for rectification. Who is Surup Damada? Who can say? Anyone knows anything about Surup Damada? Yeah, he was the personal secretary of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And one of his duties was that if anyone came and they wanted to read some poem or some Vaishnava literature that they had composed, they wanted to read to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Srub Damada would check it first. Because so many people used to come. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very famous, so people like to come, oh, I've, I've written something, please listen. But in composing Vaishnava literature, one has to be very careful. There are many kinds of faults which can come in Vaishnava literature if one doesn't know the proper process for composing there are two particular faults which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't like at all. Bhakti Siddhanta Biruta Arashabas Shunite Prabhur Mane Nahoyolash. These two faults, if Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard them, he was, he was not happy at all. One is Bhakti Siddhanta Biruta, means some kind of idea which is against the conclusion of pure devotional service. And the other is rasabhas. It means one who doesn't know the science of rasa. If he tries to speak on the pastimes of Krishna, he will make, he doesn't know how to express the relationships properly and he'll mix up the rasas. This rasa is a great science. So anyway, this poet had come from Bengal and he'd made some drama about Lord Chaitanya and Lord Jagannath. And all the devotees, they thought, this is very nice. But Surup Damada, who was expert in understanding all the fine points of philosophy, he detected that this poet was influenced by Mayavad. So he didn't allow that poet to read his drama before Lord, Jagat, before Lord Chaitanya. How, however, he gave some instruction to that poet by which he could uh, understand Vaishnava philosophy properly. He told him, Jau Bhagavata Paro Vaishnava Sthane. You go and you hear Bhagavatam from someone who is a pure devotee. So, hearing from the right source, applying our intelligence, this is the proper method to approach Bhagavatam. Studying the Bhagavatam is a great endeavor. Even just from the point of view of the size, it's such a big book. If you say, I'm going to read Srimad Bhagavatam, it's not like saying, I'm going to read the newspaper. If you read one hour every day, it may take you two years, maybe, maybe more. That's why, in the beginning of Bhagavatam, we find the rishis at Naimisharanya asking Sutta Goswami that Sugadev Goswami was already a self-realized soul, so why did he take the trouble of studying such a great literature as Srimad Bhagavatam. Da, yeah, should, should Srimad Bhagavatam. If he was already he was already happy in spiritual bliss, so why did he undertake any why did he study some literature, especially such a big literature? What is the answer? Does anyone know? The answer is one of the most important verses in the Bhagavatam. Atma Ramas Chamunayo. Nigranta apyurakrami kravanti haiti kim bhaktim stita how is it? Itam guna bhuto hari says that uh, even though someone is satisfied in themselves, uh, Amarama tamunayo nigranta apyurakrami still they are still they are attracted to hearing about Krishna. So Srimad Bhagavatam such a great book. 
This was delivered by Krishna to Brahma in four verses. Later Brahma's disciple Narad gave the inspiration to his disciple Vyas to explain the Bhagavatam elaborately. Vyasadeva had compiled all the Shastras, but still he felt dissatisfied. His work was not complete. Even though he had written so many Mahabharata, such a big book, still not, not satisfied. So Vyasadeva again sat down for another big job, composing Bhagavatam. Then Vyasadeva taught it to Sukadeva. Sukadeva was interested in running away from home because he didn't want to get caught in family life maya. But he consented to stay for a little time to hear the Bhagavatam from his father. It was described, not in the Bhagavatam itself, but in Brahma Bhagavad Purana, that Sukadeva, he ran away from home, but later on his father told him, look, I want to teach you Bhagavatam. So then he came, he heard the Bhagavatam, and then away, again he went away. Then Sukadeva spoke to Parikshit, what he heard from his father, enriched with his own uh, transcendental ecstasy. So, along with Parikshit, so many sages were there also to hear, among whom was Sutta Goswami, who later, on the request of the rishis at Naimisharanya, again spoke what he had heard uh, from what he had heard from Shukadev. He again spoke in full to the. Shonakadi Rishi at Nemisharanya. And then Vyasadev, first the commentary was by Sridhar Swami. And later other Vaishnava Acharyas, such as Madhvacharya, Vir Raghava Acharya, Vishnu Chakravar Thakur, before him the Sanatan Goswami, Jiva Goswami, they all gave their commentaries. But Sansasar Thakur also gave his commentary. Then Prabhupada, when he was Translating these books, he had one big book like this in Sanskrit, the Bhagavatam, with all the different Sanskrit commentaries. And he also had another book with Bhaktisant Sarsar Thakur's Bengali commentary. So each verse he used to study the, he would read the commentaries of the different Acharyas. Then he would select the essence of all those commentaries and sometimes add his own realization. And this way we get the Bhaktivedanta purport. So this is Srivan Bhagavatam, which is uh, recommended by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is dear to all the Vaishnavas. Srivan Bhagavatam Puranam Amalam Yad Vaishnavanam Priyam. The Bhagavatam is very dear to the Vaishnavas because it is the spotless Purana. Spotless means in this book there is no recommendation to try to enjoy this material world in any way. Nor, nor is there any recommendation to give up this material world for impersonal liberation. At the very beginning, all ka- everything, cheating religion is kicked out. Dharma, projita, koitava, atra. Koitav dharma means any kind of religious process which doesn't bring us to Krishna consciousness, pure Krishna consciousness. Of which the worst cheating, according to Krishna Kaviraj Goswami and Chaitanya Charitamrita. The worst kind of cheating religion is the idea of impersonal liberation. Dharma de Mokavancha Koitav Padhan Jaha Hoiti Krishna Bhakti Hoi Antardhan. He says that of all the different kinds of cheating, the idea of impersonal liberation is the worst. Because by that desire, all possibility of bhakti, devotion to Krishna, is finished. He says, Hoy Antadhan, it vanishes. That, that name is here, Antadhan, Maharaj Antadhan. So because there's no idea of anything but pure Krishna consciousness in Bhagavatam, the Bhagavatam is very dear to the Vaishnavas. And Yasmin Paramahangsya Mekamam Lam Gyanam Param what, what kind of knowledge is given in here that is not any other kind of knowledge but that which is appreciated by the topmost devotees of the Lord? Tatra Gyanavi Raga. Bhakti Sahitam Naishkamyam Avishkritam. In this Bhagavatam is revealed how to live in this world uh, serving Krishna without getting entangled in the material world. How to work in such a way with all knowledge, renunciation, and devotion. Therefore, Tatrindan, Supatan, Vicharanaparo, Bhaktya, Vimuchan, Naraha. 
Therefore, always hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Read very carefully, applying our intelligence. If we do like this with devotion, then we are sure to go back to Godhead. Now, by the grace of Srila Bhakti Sansasar Thakur and Srila Prabhupada, we have something else to say about Bhagavatam. Hear Bhagavatam, study Bhagavatam, consider deeply the subject matter of Bhagavatam, and now also distribute Bhagavatam. This Bhagavatam is called Paramahamsa Sanghita, means the book which is suitable for topmost liberated devotees. But Prabhupada is so merciful, he's distributing to everybody, so that everybody can get the chance to become Paramahamsa Vaishnava. So therefore, we should make sure in Bhagavatam our whole life. Prabhupada one time, in lecture in Vrindavan, he was saying we should make Bhagavatam our life. We should read Bhagavatam, live the message of Bhagavatam by following the instructions of Bhagavatam. Discuss the subject matter of Bhagavatam with the devotees and distribute Bhagavatam to others. In this way, we can also become Bhagavata. The meaning of the word Bhagavat is that which is in relationship with Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Bhagavat means there's two kinds of Bhagavat. Ek Bhagavata Baro Bhagavata Shastra A Bhagavat Bhakta Bhakti Vasha Patra. One kind of Bhagavat is the book Bhagavat. And another is the devotee who is filled up with the uh, feelings of devotion. So by reading Bhagavatam, living Bhagavatam, we can also become Bhagavat, pure devotee. Any question? Translate the question? You can say. Well, that answer can be given in one word. What is that word? Maya. <coughs> because we are interested in reading Superman comics and newspapers, or newspapers, or maybe a little more sophisticated, we read literature like Shakespeare. So Superman is Maya, newspaper is Maya, Shakespeare is Maya. That's why we don't have a taste. So better read Bhagavatam and get out of Maya. Another answer why people are not appreciating, then we can say it's our fault. We can see like that. We, we haven't preached enough. Our job is to turn around the people's minds so that we have to distribute more and more. Bhagavatam. There's no literature like this. You look through all your bookshops, you won't find anything like this. That's why Prabhupada was saying, the famous thing Prabhupada was saying, there is no comparison, there is no competition within the whole universe as Srimad Bhagavatam. Every line, every word is for the benefit of the human society. If someone reads even one line, even one word, huh, he will be benefited. So therefore, we are begging you, please, Distribute books, distribute books, distribute books. We can appreciate Bhagavatam more if we go out and distribute. Every time we distribute a book, we feel that mercy coming from Lord Chaitanya. The книга, um, сакачко подаримо една книга, потем лако чутимо. The more we distribute books, the more we appreciate these books. So now you have plenty of books. So. Distribute them. Any other question? Sri Swami, there's not much known about him. He lived some, what, less than a thousand years ago, several hundred years ago. Even his date is not sure. His, we know him by his commentary, which has remained. He's a great devotee of Lord Nrishingha Dei. And throughout his commentary, he always writes prayers to Lord Nrishingha Dei and invokes the blessings of Lord Nishinga Dei. And all, all uh, Bhagavatam commentaries after Sridhar Swami, they're all based on Sridhar Swami's commentary. If any commentary doesn't follow Sridhar Swami, we can't accept that. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not accept. When Vallabhabhata came, Vallabhabhata said, I've made a commentary better than Sridhar Swami's. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he did not accept him. 
Shami Jainamani Tara Vaisya Madhigan. He said that if you don't accept Sridhar Swami, I think you're if you don't follow Sridhar Swami, I think you're just like a prostitute. Pretty heavy about it. Any other question? Uh, which are these four verses which Krishna spoke to Brahma? That's uh, that you'll find in second canto of Bhagavatam. Ahameva, Sameva, Gray, etc. You'll find in those purports, Prabhupada writes, one of them is about seven pages, the purport. Another is about five pages. You'll find that, the whole summary, summary of the mm-hmm. energies. So that's important. Actually, Bhagavatam, we should start. Start reading Canto 1, chapter 1, verse 1. And then go, verse 2, verse 3. It is verse by verse. Prabhupada says that we should read very carefully, not jumping from one place to another, but start from the beginning and then go through to the end. Then you can start at the beginning again. It's like meditating on Krishna's form. First you start from the feet, then you go gradually up. So the first canto is compared to the feet of Krishna. And the tenth canto is compared to his face. So you have to start at the feet and go up gradually. Any other question? Uh, was Srimad Bhagavatam written uh, before Shukadeva Goswami spoke? Well, that I already explained. After Sutta Goswami spoke, it was written. At least the written form we have now. That is what was written after Sutta Goswami spoke. Actually, we have 18,000 verses. But there are many, many more verses available now. But anyway, this is the essence of Bhagavatam. Who said that? Do you know? Yeah, some idiot, yeah, Dayananda Sarasvati. What do you say? Well, we don't really have anything to say. The guy's just an idiot, that's all. No, uh, no Vaishnava Acharya accepts such a stupid idea. Uh, he wanted to discredit the Bhagavatam, so he made up this story. And the so-called Indologists from the Western countries, because they also wanted to discredit Vedic literature, they took up such a story and they brought in all their books. But no actual authority on Bhagavatam accepts such a stupid idea. Just like I could say that uh, all these plays, they weren't actually written by Shakespeare, they were written by someone else. So what, what's, what's my authority to say anything? So just like this Dayananda Saraswati, he said that, but on what basis he said it? He just he just said it, that's all. So you can say any crazy thing you like. People are doing that. So many people claiming themselves to be God. But that doesn't mean we have to accept it. Yeah, people like this, they can't understand what transcendental benefit they're getting. They can't understand what? They, why don't you translate the question? <laughs> These ordinary simple people, they can't understand what transcendental benefit they're getting from yeah. giving to Krishna. So even if you gave them the proper answer, they wouldn't be able to understand it anyway. So you think of whatever you like to say. Somehow or other convince them. You have to give some money. If you tell them that uh, you'll get liberated from birth and death, and you'll, you'll get fed up with eating meat and drinking wine, and they won't want to give you any money. So what do you usually say? You say something like, well, so many young people, they're coming to us and we're helping them to get free from drugs. I don't know, whatever you say. Whatever you say, say it. That's, all. That's also true. That's not, our, our main purpose is not to help students or young people to lead a clean life. But that automatically happens. So ordinary people, they cannot appreciate that we're teaching love of God. But they can appreciate that we're helping young people to lead a better life. So we can, whatever they can understand, speak to them. Any more questions? They have statistics from 5,000 years ago. So, what statistics are they going to give? What is the title? The Dras Resident. Can you translate the question? I didn't understand. What it is, is that in the... 
Prabhupada is quoting Vishwanath Chakravati. See, the story is said that Vitrasura was doing such and such, and then Vishwanath said that he started to meditate. But he says, not in the original text. So how can you know that what Vishwanath is saying is right? Now, all through his Bhagavatam commentary, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, he gives details which are not in the Bhagavatam, not directly in the text, especially in the 10th canto. There may be some few words written, and on the basis of that, he'll give a whole long story about how Krishna is joking with Radharani or something like this. So Vishnu Chakravati, he's on the same level as Vyasadeva. He's uh, eternally part of Krishna. Even he's higher than Vyasadeva. He's eternally part of Krishna's lila. So he can see what's going on. His, his vision is not limited like ours. By his meditation, he can see past, present and future. Trikalagya. Great, a great devotee has the vision to see past, present, and future. So, what he says, we accept. There are so many incidences like this. Just like uh, where, where devotees, they're living, great devotees, they're living in this world, but they're simultaneously living in the spiritual world. Just like uh, one time Raghunath Das Goswami, he was living at Radha Kund, and one time he became very sick. So the doctor came, Ayurvedic doctor, they can tell what is the problem by feeling your pulse. So, Raghunath Das Goswami,